All right, thank you to everyone who's joined so far. We're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, thank you for joining our webinar entitled Starting From Your Strengths, Planning for Sustainability. This is um, the second Innovation Hub Learning Community webinar uh, this year so far. And we are really excited to talk with you today about sustainability, what that means, how to think you know, holistically about planning for sustainability beyond um, funding, which is a very important part of sustainability, but it's not all of it. Um, my name is Laura Powis. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the Senior Program Manager for Evidence-Based Policy and Practice at AMCHIP. And I'm joined by some of my wonderful colleagues who will introduce themselves um, as they talk during the presentation. So uh, just to recap for folks who might not be familiar with the Innovation Hub Learning Community, uh, the Innovation Hub Learning Community is a technical assistance and support community that we offer to folks in our MCH Innovations database. And as a part of that community, we put on quarterly training webinars related to different programmatic best practices. Um, and so uh, the purpose of the webinar series is to focus on strategies and skills that you can apply to your work to improve organizational processes and expand the scope um, and impact of your practice and plan for program sustainability. Um, and it's open to everyone, not just Innovation Hub practices. For folks who are joining us who are a member of Innovation Hub, um, there are additional resources offered to you, including peer sharing groups, where we'll dig deeper into uh, talking through different uh, challenges that you might be facing or different strengths that you wanna highlight and share with others. Um, and to talk about different programmatic experiences you might be having or things that you want other folks thoughts on. It's really the opportunity to learn from other practices um, that might be working in a different part of MCH than you. So it's a really exciting opportunity to connect with some new folks. Um, and we also offer customized one-on-one -on -one coaching. So if you have, um, you need help with planning your evaluation, you need help thinking through sustainability in more depth, um, strategizing about key performance indicators, uh, how to adapt your practice, different things like that, we're here to support you. Um, upcoming events, just to mention briefly at the start of the call, and we'll talk about it at the end of the call as well. For quarterly webinars, our next webinar is scheduled in August, um, and it's gonna focus on scaling up your practice. So thinking about expanding your work, what might you need to consider? Um, our next peer sharing group is in June. Um, that is from four to 5 p.m. EST. And um, we are available for coaching anytime. So Noelle has chatted in the links to how to make a booking with us for one-on-one -on -one coaching, uh, the link to register for the peer sharing group and the link to register for the August webinar. So I know you might be like, you're already promoting a webinar and you haven't even finished this one, but we're just really excited about it. Um, and want to make sure that you all have that information. So to get us going with our agenda, what we're gonna chat about today, so we're gonna start off with some initial implementation framing, just sort of thinking through, um, talking about the IHLC, I see like we have been doing. We're gonna talk about sustainability domains, um, an overview of what those domains are and an opportunity to kind of reflect on what you think about when we think of sustainability. Um, and then we're gonna actually spend the bulk of today really looking at two different sustainability tools. Um, and we're super excited to have um, a partner of ours from Denver Health to talk about their experience using one of these tools. Um, and then we'll have time at the end for any questions and wrap up. Um, any questions that you have, we have folks monitoring the chat. So as you have questions, they're gonna kind of flag them throughout the presentation for us so that we can uh, make sure that your questions are answered. So our goal is that by the end of this session, you'll be able to describe the key factors needed to support sustainability over time that you'll be able to identify areas of strength related to the sustainability of your work, and you'll be able to brainstorm aspects of sustainability you would like to focus on as you move forward with your work. And with that, I am gonna turn it over to my colleague, Ollie. Hi everyone, um, I'm Ollie. I use she, her pronouns, and I am a senior analyst on the evidence and implementation team at AMCHIP. Um, and I'm gonna be uh, talking more about sustainability domains. Next slide, please. Um, so to kind of warm up our brains, it is the afternoon, so to kind of get back in the swing of things, um, we wanna have a little discussion about what does sustainability mean to you? So Noelle has put um, the link to the Mentimeter in the chat. Um, and then also if you have your phone and you prefer to use that, you can scan the QR code on the screen and that will take you um, to the Mentimeter. Um, and we just wanna really, 
hear when you hear sustainability, what does that mean? What is that kind of what are the words that that brings to mind? And um, kind of what's your definition of sustainability? Because there are many and they are all very different. So we would just like to hear more about what y'all have to say. I think Laura is pulling us over to the Mentimeter right now. <laughs> I am indeed. Um, just getting it set up so that we can see. I see a lot of different folks have answers rolling in. Um, all right, wonderful. So I'm going to go ahead and share that. So um, yeah, Ollie, if you want to walk us through some of these answers. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, so we have seven and growing, eight and growing <laughs> answers, which is awesome. Looks for, looks like we have a couple that mentioned being in it for the long term, just thinking about the long term of the program, um, maintain their ongoing efforts, a permanent positive change in a community system, planning for an ongoing future of your program or activity, continuing the work, um, the ways in which a product lives on beyond the initial efforts, um, programs continuing beyond grant funding, and enough resources and organizational will to keep a program or initiative going over the long term, maintained efforts, efforts uh, longevity, and the ability to fund and keep prog the program relevant and a strong CQI process, so a continuous qual quality improvement process, and being able to survive to continue making change. So. Um, love seeing that we're not just thinking about grant funding, even though that is a big part of sustainability, but we have um, in kind of in the room, we have a lot of different understandings and perspectives of sustainability. Um, and it seems like common themes we have here are longevity, planning, resources, and kind of organizational will or interest um, to kind of just keep the program going, which is awesome. Um, so if we could Jump back to the slides, please. And if we could hop to the next slide, please. Awesome, thank you. Um, so here we have just a visual overview of the stages of implementation. This is the active implementation um, framework, um, starting with exploration on the left, moving into installation, initial implementation, and then full implementation on the right. Um, kind of as we can see, these are the general steps, but we have these bi-directional arrows in between each stage. So there's a lot of movement back and forth across all of these different, um, across all of these different stages. Um, so we kind of just want to, we'll do a little bit of overview of the stages here and then talk about how this factors into sustainability. So, um, exploration and planning is really just identifying the need and what are the possible sets of practices or the specific practice, um, that you might want to, um, install or implement it within your organization. So that's kind of the, the what aspect. Installation is building your organizational or kind of system capacity necessary to support that future practice. So whether that's getting staff, um, getting these kind of feedback loops in place so that when the program is actually in place that you can gather data and figure out kind of what's working and what's not after it's been, um, the, it's that planning aspect of getting those uh, of getting those feedback loops in place and making sure that those data gathering systems are in place before the project kind of launches. Um, so once you know what to, so expiration is the what, installation is the kind of getting ready once you know what, so. And then moving into initial implementation, that's beginning to use the planned practices and learning about the unintended or intended outcomes that accompany the practice. So. As we know, when you are implementing a new program, you never really fully know what is going to happen. Things always come up that are new and different. And so 
um, within initial implementation, this is kind of a, a growth period where those feedback loops that you established earlier on come into play where you can gather feedback and information and data about kind of what's working, what needs to be adapted, what needs to be um, either eliminated or grown. And that's um, kind of, that's the initial implementation stage. And then the full implementation um, is generally considered when the practice itself has become entrenched within the organization, has become entrenched within the, um, within the community and just ensuring that there are the resources, including like material resources, staff, space, kind of all of these different things that um, kind of, it's just built into workflows and built into organizational processes. So um, kind of like we mentioned earlier, when people were talking about longevity of their program, even if there's staff turnover or something like that, um, full implementation is uh, that stage. But kind of as we see with the arrows moving back and forth across the, the, the spectrum, uh, full implementation is not really just a checkbox. It's like, all right, we did it, we're done, no problem. Um, when it comes to tying all this together with sustainability, we really like to think about how sustainability is a process that is, uh, you can kind of start anytime throughout the implementation um, period as a whole including exploration, installation, all of the stages. Um, there's no wrong time or too late to think about sustainability. Um, and it is very likely that um, if you are in the midst of implementing a new practice or you are um, thinking about it, that you're already continually thinking about the sustainability, the longevity, the feasibility of the different aspects of the program. Um, and in this sense, sustainability is a process that happens over the course of all of these stages. Um, if you could just hit the next button, Laura, there's, I think there's a banner. Yeah. So <laughs> here, we just want to say effective implementation is building sustainability. So instead of kind of siloing sustainability as its own um, kind of separate domain or own separate piece of program implementation, it's if you're um, we really just want to communicate that effective implementation, that good, the structure ahead of time is how you build a sustainable program. It's in those little pieces and steps that you do along the way. It's not just thinking about, all right, we have enough funding for X number of years and we're good. Because as we all know, obviously, yep, funding is important, but things change and you never really know. So the sustainability aspect is kind of continually changing and moving with the process of implementation. Um, next slide, please. So um, within this scope, we are, it's helpful to kind of think about what we mean when we say sustainability. Like we saw before, a lot of people have um, pretty similar ideas of what sustainability means, but there's no one specific definition. And so when it comes to thinking about your specific practice or program, it's really helpful to think about whether or not we're trying to institutionalize the program or these program activities within our organization. So is this kind of on the organizational side of things? Do we want continued benefits or improved outcomes for a specific population served by the program? So it's kind of how users and participants and people with lived experience are continuing to respond positively or not to the program. Um, to the next, yeah. Um, is it the maintaining the capacity of those helping or guiding um, the implementation of the program? So it is, is it more sustaining uh, the backside of things and just making sure that the people who are delivering the program have what they need to continue to do that um, and the many different definitions of what those resources could be? Um, and then, may, or are we trying to maintain attention to the issues addressed by the program, even if the program itself doesn't continue? Um, so as we know, needs change and things change. And so the program, it could be sustained in the sense that it does what it set out to do, but after um, maybe interest wanes or the need is eliminated in some way, um, being able to kind of phase that out and say, all right, that is something we did what we set out to do. Um, and so a large piece of that is also thinking about the different domains of sustainability. So earlier we talked about um, a little bit about like Funding is obviously a piece of that, about kind of staffing, um, but there are a lot of different ways uh, to think about sustainability. And based on a um, 
pretty in-depth literature review that um, our team has done, we have pulled out these specific domains that when it comes to frameworks, uh, looking at sustainability and trying to pull out what are the pieces that help sustain a program in the long term, these are the things that we have um, come up with and think are the most important. These are kind of different dimensions of sustainability. Um, so the first one is uh, continuous quality improvement and evaluation. So collecting consistent data that will allow you to track and show change over time. Um, so back when I was talking about installation, those feedback loops that you're creating so that um, you can get feedback from participants, from staff and figure out that how things are actually going. Um, that's an aspect uh, of sustainability in, um, in the evaluation and QI piece of it, which I believe someone also mentioned um, in the mentee, which is awesome. The next one is benefits to communities and users. So are individuals engaged with the program and continuing to benefit? Is there a continued benefit past the individual? Um, so when it comes to this, we, I think in public health, tend to be very focused on the benefits to community and users. Those are our target populations and the people that we're um, working with and working to impact their lives in a, in a positive way. And so is there a continued benefit to this program or kind of like I mentioned before, has the need um, decreased lately or is the population that you're working with, have they pivoted their attention in some way? Um, so kind of figuring out the benefits to, and to communities and users side of things is another um, dimension. Uh, this is one that we know well, uh, stable funding streams and financial resources. Um, so the funding to maintain staff and any supportive roles to engage the community um, and ensure they are compensated for their time and energy, um, ensuring that those with lived experience who are helping you are uh, compensated for their perspective and kind of in being subject matter experts in their lived experience with uh, relation to, the, um, to your program. Um, but as we see, this is only one dimension or one domain within sustainability, and there are many more. Also, there, uh, just a subtle note here, there's no, uh, these are not in any specific order. <laughs> They're just how we put them on the slide. <laughs> um, the next one is organizational characteristics and processes. So is there space within the organization for dedicated staff and time for this program? So organizations change, leadership changes, and is there... Um, space and a lot of resources within the organization for um, this program to have dedicated people, dedicated materials and resources to ensure that um, it can function in the way that it needs to, to continue doing all of these other things. So within the organization where it's housed, kind of what's, what's the deal long-term with kind of the entrenchment of the, of the program or the, or the practice. Uh, the next one is program adaptability. So these are characteristics of the program itself that are malleable enough to ensure that the core components are maintained, but the program still meets the needs and wants of the target population. So um, kind of, as I've mentioned before, things change. Everything is very fluid right now and has been for a long time. So um, a program that you install and implement may not necessarily meet the needs of the same group of people 10 years down the line or five years down the line. And so ensuring that um, is the program, are these pieces changeable and fluid enough to ensure that the need is still being met and that we're doing everything we want to do? Or is that a possibility that maybe this program just kind of did what it needs to do and it's time to kind of pivot to something else? Um, because what we have in place may not be malleable enough to stay the same, but change with the needs of uh, the target population. The next is contextual and environmental fit. So this is characteristics, uh, kind of external characteristics of the community ecosystem. So looking at the social, political, and fiscal landscape um, that would support and allow the program to continue to function effectively. So these are the kind of external factors that um, obviously the organization and the program are kind of living in this ecosystem and how the ecosystem also is constantly changing. People are moving in and out of communities, communities are changing and their needs and wants are changing. So seeing kind of keeping a, keeping a pulse of the, of the external fit and kind of making sure that the program still um, still fits. 
And then the last one is active and communicative relationships and partnerships with collaborators across the community. So in this way, kind of as you mentioned before, we uh, programs that are entrenched in the community and fit in the community often have um, partnerships and have stakeholders and other people with lived experience that are um, impacting the program, its content, its delivery. Um, and so does the team or organization have stable and mutually beneficial partnerships with other organizations, community-based organizations, or just general community stakeholders? And is their time and input clearly valued and utilized in program operations and activities? So in this way, um, that could be, um, that could be, are we compensating people for their time? Are these partnerships, do they make sense within the scope of the program? Are they mutually beneficial? Um, and so main, uh, maintaining those relationships over time within the scope of the program or the organization is kind of one of the, one of our, our last kind of sustainability dimension that is um, important to keep in mind when thinking about sustainability. Um, and so, yeah, I'm going to pass it back to Laura for the sustainability tool deep dive. Thanks, Ollie. Um, so now that we are a little more grounded in kind of conceptually sustainability, what are we even thinking about? What are we talking about? We are going to spend some time to talk through um, a couple different resources that you can use to help plan for your own program sustainability. Um, so the first is AMCHIP's Planning for Sustainability tool. Um, we're going to spend the bulk of our time today talking about this. This tool is based upon um, a lot of different sustainability frameworks that are out there. Um, another tool that we're going to share, the um, Planning for Sustainability Assessment tool, um, as well as some different just frameworks that are um, existing out there. And we offer sort of a step-by-step -step process for how you can really start to think about for your specific program, what does sustainability look like? So there are four main steps. First is identifying your core values. Next is selecting your sustainability domains. Then we define our current and future state goals and then uh, begin the action planning for sustainability process. And none of this means anything to you right now, but we're gonna walk through each of these four steps um, together. So the first is identifying core values. So probably helpful to first assess what are some core values. So, um, and then uh, I offered to the chat, does anyone in the chat know or have an answer for what core values are um, when we're talking about them in the context of programs or organizations? So what are core values? I'm hearing um, your target beneficiaries. One answer from the chat. Anyone else have anything? Thoughts on what core values are? Might relate to mission and vision statements. Yep. Yeah. So um, very much aligned with that. They are the must do part of the program. Oh, wait. I feel like this always happens when you ask for chat. It's like a waterfall that happens once folks actually have time to type. Um, so they are the must do part of running the program that are not malleable, how your mission statement is implemented and seen through the values they choose to build a foundation from. So y'all are experts on this already. So your core values are really your deeply ingrained principles that guide an organization or a program's operations. I think of them as sort of the internal compass of the principles that drive or should underpin all of your activities. Um, and they guide all future activities and ensure that scale up is authentic to the core tenets of the original practice. So this is really important when we're thinking about sustainability in terms of organizational capacity, right? If you have staff turnover, do you have clearly articulated somewhere the core values of your program that are, um, so those could be, I have some examples here, they could be being youth empowerment centered, it could be being patient driven, it could be um, focusing on equal opportunity, it could be prioritizing those with greatest need. So really wanting to make sure you take the time to think about for your own program, what are those core values that are fundamental to your work? Um, that as you work through and think about sustainability, scale up, um, those are really central to what you're doing. Um, so for selecting sustainability domains, um, that's the next step in the process of the tool. And I should say, we're gonna share the tool after we do this walkthrough with you. We have a 
Um, it's posted on the AmTrip website and we're gonna share the kind of PDF um, Word doc version of the tool that really walks you through these steps. But for um, once you've identified your core values, um, the next step is to think about sustainability domains. So our sustainability domains allow us to ensure that we're thinking holistically about sustainability. And when we're selecting domains, you can both create some specific domains that are tailored just to your program or use some of the pre-established domains like those that Ollie shared. Um, some examples, you'll see some of these are pulling from what Ollie shared, some of them are pulling from the sustainability assessment tool. But so when you're really thinking about sustainability, you wanna be thinking inclusively, right? About things like your organizational capacity. So what is what are you gonna need for sustainability related to staff or organizational processes or leadership buy-in? Um, you'll see program, program adaptation that Ollie talked about before, quality improvement and evaluation, um, so thinking about what is quality improvement gonna look like? What is your process for refinement as you sustain your practice? What's your evaluation process? Funding sustainability, as Ollie talked about, partnerships is really key. So thinking about what are your current partnerships? What are your future partnerships you might want? And um, we're gonna walk through that kind of current future thinking in just a moment here. Thinking about supplies and resources. So sometimes it's important to think about quite literally, like what supplies do you need for your practice and how are you gonna sustain those? Do you have those through your parent organization? Um, is that something you're gonna need funding for? So just really wanting to make sure you're thinking also about some of those logistical pieces. Um, organizational capacity we talked about, program adaptation, how might you want to adapt your program as you continue with sustainability. If you scale up your practice, how might you want to adapt your program? Sort of strategic planning. Is there any more deep thinking that you need to do there in terms of what you are hoping to accomplish? Um, any tweaking to your goals, things to that effect. Communications and then environmental support. So this, um, I feel like this is the most convoluted of them just in terms of jargon, but really by environmental support, what we mean is thinking about for your program, is there a conducive environment from leadership for the importance of sustaining it? Is there an inclusive, inducive, um, in, yes, inducive environment um, from the public? So folks really understanding the importance of the program, um, that kind of public buy-in as well, or is that something you might need to work on? So what we advise you do just to, it would be great. You can think about everything on this list. Um, but also just being realistic of bandwidth. Uh, we recommend you pick between like five and nine of these sustainability domains to then go through the next step of our process, which is current and future state planning. Um, so there's different ways you can do this on our tool. It's a Word doc table. We also have jam boards. You can also do this with good old fashioned whiteboard and sticky notes. But essentially for each domain, um, what we'll have you do is, uh, really articulate what is the current state of that domain, right? So let's say we're thinking about partnerships. What are some strengths related to your current partnerships? You're gonna to wanna to document those and then think about what are areas for growth, right? So the first part of this activity is really thinking about where are we now? What does this look like now? And then we get to shift to think about where would we like to be? So a year from now, what would you like your partnerships to look like? Five years from now, what would you like your partnerships to look like? And so our goal with this is really to help you identify one, what you're doing well, because even though sustainability is a very intimidating task, I guarantee there are things that you have, there are assets that your program has that are going to set you up really well for sustainability in the future. Um, so really articulating what those are and also identifying areas of growth. The next step after you kind of walk through this process is to then start your action planning, right? So. As you're going through and thinking about your different domains, you might um, notice, okay, well, we actually are pretty good on the outreach front, but how can we switch to better, um, how do we improve our partnerships, right? If we have strong communication plans, we might wanna focus on partnerships first. So that's really when you move towards your action planning. So with that, we recommend you kind of taking time with your team or on your own, depending on what your organizational structure is like and thinking through, well, what are the activities that we would need to do to get from our current state to that year one goal, right? To what you want your, your work to look like in that year one. Um, so we have a table, you can modify this to meet your own needs, but essentially just really wanting you to think through, one, what's the work that you're gonna be doing? What's the activity that needs to happen? 
what's the intended product or measurable outcome? So we're trying to help build in some of that quality improvement process right from the get-go, right? A way for you to monitor and track, are we making progress towards those sustainability goals? So what would the outcome of that work look like? What resources are you going to need? And those can be people, right? That can be funding, that can be um, a whole slew of different things, but what resources might you need? What's your timeline for when you want um, to get this activity done? And then who's responsible for getting it done? Um, so this can be a little bit more in the weeds of like action planning related to sustainability. Um, and I know that this was a lot of information for me to just talk at you. So we thought that it might be helpful to hear from someone who's actually done this process. Um, so I'm really happy to introduce uh, Tara Milinkovic from Denver Health. Uh, they are the Denver Health Youth Program Manager and we're a part of our replication project. And we had the opportunity to work through the sustainability planning process together last fall. So I will hand it over to you if you want to tell us more about your experience with this tool. Great, thanks, Laura. Um, so yeah, my name is Tara Milinkovic. I use she, her pronouns. I um, do youth engagement work in school-based health centers at Denver Health. Um, and we were lucky enough to have Laura, um, somehow it lined up that Laura was able to be in Denver. <laughs> so we went through this process in person um, with um, myself and another one of our team members. And I, I'm just going to share a little bit about like what the experience was like. And then I think the next slides show a couple of examples. Um, but what was so helpful about this process for me was probably two things. One is that I find sustainability planning super overwhelming. Just like the word of sustainability is overwhelming to me. Um, I, focus almost a hundred percent on funding. And I'm like, how do we get the funding? How do we get the funding? And, um, and then that stresses me out. Um, and then even as we were going through those, um, domains, like on this webinar, I was like, oh my God, those domains are so overwhelming. <laughs> so I'm like, which one do I pick? What does it mean? How do we, and then it just turns into this, like, how are we going to do this type of thing? Um, so when we did this process, um, we were really able to first kind of center ourselves around our core values, which I think is so important and something that I actually even like to do when I'm feeling frustrated, frustrated with my job. <laughs> um, I think about like, okay, what are your core values? Why are you doing this? What can, what do you not what are you doing that isn't related to your core values so that you can get stuff away um, and stuff like that. So we really were able to like get back to what are our core values? Why are we implementing this program? Um, how is it important to our organization and how is it important to the young people that we're serving? Um, the next slide. So there we go. So we were able to like really dive into what are our core values? Why is this so that, like I said, it's important for me in building a program to be able to focus on that. But then it also goes to like, as we're doing outreach or we're talking to um, leadership within our organization or other community leaders to really be able to clearly articulate what our core values are. Um, so this is what we came up with. Um, I didn't talk about what our program is. Laura, should I talk at all about doing Patch or just this process? Yeah, for sure. If you want to tell us a bit about Patch, that'd be great. Yeah. So we um, got a grant from AMCHIP to pilot one year of the Patch Teen Educator Program, which is in the, which is um, an evidence-based practice in the Innovation Hub, right? Okay, I couldn't remember if there were different um, places that it is. Um, and basically we hire a group of young people uh, and we train them to lead workshops with medical providers on how to do a better job of working with teens. Um, and then we they also do workshops with their peers on how to understand their rights and responsibilities within the healthcare system. A lot of the focus is around confidentiality and rights and all of that big important stuff. 
Um, and then we, it's also a youth empowerment program and model. So we bring them together twice a month and we do enrichment meetings and um, they learn about important health priorities. And then the idea is that they're going to go out into the community um, and share with their peers what they have learned. Um, and so it's spreading in that way as well. And um, we just kind of randomly were connected to it and we're like, we have to implement this at our uh, at our organization. And we were the first ones in Denver. So we did a lot, we've done a lot of trying to like make it known and um, kind of communicate to people how important it is for our community. Um, but I loved that we were able to go back to these are our core values. So when we are expanding or doing anything else or stressing over something, we can go back and be like, does this fit within our core values? Um, and so then the next step, let's see what we did on the next slide. Oh, so there's me and Austin. Um, and we started thinking about, so we went from those core values and then we did our current state. So we were able to identify where are we and you can see our domains there. Um, but what was really help, really, really helpful for this was after we mapped out our current state, we were like, oh, we're actually like doing a really good job in a lot of these areas. And we don't really even need to touch them in that one year out stage. So that made me feel like, okay, we can do some sustainability planning and work because we can break it down into smaller pieces. And we're actually kind of awesome, which was a fun byproduct of that. Um, so we mapped out our current state and then we were like, okay, what do we need to, here's our future, our year and five years. And sometimes I can be a really, really big picture thinker. So this was more help. This was helpful to be like, don't think about like you can write down five years, but don't think about it right now. Right now we're looking at getting from our pilot year through our first year. Um, and so it kind of broke it down into those pieces. And then we were able to say, here are the ones that we want to focus on. Um, and what are we doing well in these focus areas already? And then where do we want to improve? So like um, for example, under this community youth partnership, so SBHCs is school-based health centers. So we have 19 school-based health centers um, in schools across the Denver Public School District. And then our relationship with our school-based health centers is really strong because that's our organization, but they're in Denver Public School buildings. And our relationship with DPS could be stronger. So we're able to then dive down deeper and figure out what are we gonna do to strengthen our relationship there with DPS. And then we got into more planning of like, what do we need to do? And, um, so we were like, let's see, outreach. We have kind of been ad hoc. It was a lot of it was dependent on me and my relationships with other people um, within like our work community and um, other CBOs and stuff. So getting more of a coordinated communication strategy, like eventually we want to have a newsletter or something like that. Um, so and a more comprehensive map of potential partners, that type of thing. Um, it was good to look at personnel. It's helpful for us. We were able to identify like our parent organization, my FTE is covered. Um, probably not forever and ever, but like that's an actual strength. We don't need to worry about that right now. Um, and so it really helped us break it down to the weeds. And I, did you do the other one where we did all the like action planning? I can't remember. So that's when we really got to like, this is one thing we want to do. Here's the timeline. Here's the person that's responsible. And then we were able to check it off the list, um, which felt really good to be like, oh, that thing that was kind of floating in my head that I felt like we need to do something about it. We were able to actually get it down and then check mark it when we finished it. So. And I'll just cheerlead Tara and her team for a minute in that in between even our monthly check-ins, we would kind of come back to that action plan and then be able to say, oh, wow, this has been done already, or this morphed and took a different form, but it kind of filled that same need. And I think just highlighting that um, one of the great things that can come out of this process is highlighting the strengths that you already have to build off of. 
because like Tara was saying, it can be really intimidating. Sustainability, looking at all those domains, you're like, there's so many, but really it's trying to just get you from where you are right now to where you'd like to be a year out and what you can prioritize. Um, so thank you so much, Tara, for sharing your experience. Um, hopefully that makes folks feel a little bit less overwhelmed. Um, and we wanted to offer also one more tool, um, which is the Program Sustainability and Assessment Tool. And so this is a tool that offers, if you are feeling a little bit unsure still with sustainability, or you'd like a little bit more structure to this process um, with some more specific guiding questions, that's where the Program Sustainability Assessment Tool is really wonderful. Um, it also generates for you a sustainability report um, where it can highlight different areas that you might want to prioritize. So it does a little bit of that prioritization process for you. Um, one caveat with the tool, it doesn't do as great of a job highlighting strengths um, or the, the tool itself does, but it can be a little bit overwhelming to get this report back and see like, oh, you're doing really poorly in this one area. So just a grain of salt to make sure that you also take the time to celebrate all of the things you're doing well related to sustainability um, and try not to focus too much, even though those will be your areas of growth, but don't let it get you down if there are areas where you feel like, um, like for example, on the report on the screen, you can see their communications was um, really low, but they had really strong environmental support. So you can kind of see the differences there. So just some key takeaways before we open it up for questions. Um, sustainability is more than just funding. As we've talked about, there's a lot of different ways to think about it. Um, effective implementation helps to build sustainability. So even just through doing your, pro your project, your program in a, um, you know, implementation focused way, it is helping to build those capacities that you need for sustainability. So the work you're doing is already building towards sustainability. So it's really about leveraging that and helping that grow. Um, there is not a one size fits all approach to sustainability. That's why we encourage you to kind of think holistically about the sustainability domains that make the most sense for your work and focus on flushing those out. When you're trying to just uh, what you're trying to sustain may change over time. So flexibility is key. As Tara mentioned, we have those action plans, right? But when we go back and look at those month by month, things change. It's not like you have to hold yourself to everything that you've said, but you have them written down. You can come back to them and really think about, is this helping? Is this what you need? Um, or is it time to pivot uh, course? Um, so you want to think about there, identify opportunities to leverage your existing organization and project strengths. So really encouraging you to think about what are we already doing well that we can build out or lean upon to help us towards sustainability. And uh, just thinking that sustainability is the result of organizational effort and values, internal buy-in, and the alignment of project and program within its context it's being implemented in. So multi sustainability is really multifaceted. Um, and there's really that kind of leaning on that no one size fits all. It's really that amalgamation coming together of all of those different attributes. Um, and also just something to highlight, we haven't talked about too much yet, but having an external or community champion can go a really long way towards supporting sustainability. I know um, through Tara's work that that's been really helpful to kind of have folks within the Denver health community uh, learn about Patch, see its merit, folks who've been trained in it, then become champions of Patch. So that can really help with that kind of environmental um, supports, right? The, the kind of larger buy-in to your work and why it matters. Um, and having those champions and cheerleaders can be really helpful um, towards, you know, even towards securing funding, towards um, ensuring that you have that leadership buy-in. So highlighting the importance of building those relationships. So now, um, we are going to launch, uh, this is kind of the end of the didactic part of our webinar here. Um, so we have a quick evaluation poll and Noelle has also just chatted in the resource that we've been talking about, the sustainability planning tool. Um, but Noelle, if you want to go ahead and launch the poll, just we appreciate the, the feedback we get from the evals really helps us to know if we're meeting the needs that we're setting out to meet um, or if you have any feedback. Um, I'm so sorry, I can't find the poll on my... I can, I have, I, I can launch it. Okay, um, sorry about that. You're fine, perfect, thank you. Um, so yes, if you don't mind just responding to the questions here. 
Um, and then as you're responding or once you respond, we are more than happy to answer any questions that you have. So you can chat in any questions um, that you'd like us to respond to into the chat. And if folks have anything additional feedback that you'd like to share with us, um, you can uh, email us at evidence at amchip.org um, and we are more than happy to um, make any modifications to future webinars based on what, you, um, what would best serve your needs. Or you can also feel free to chat us um, in the chat if you would rather that too. Um, but thank you so much to everyone. Um, anyone have any questions related to sustainability that um, we can answer during the remaining remainder of our time together here? And thank you, we have, everyone has answered, so appreciate it. So just to plug, um, as we're waiting for if there are any questions, we have those upcoming uh, webinar in August, which is gonna be talking on about so scaling up your practice. We have our peer sharing group in June, and then we're available anytime to kind of walk through this resource or any of our other resources or um, any offer just any programmatic support that you might feel you need. So I see a question um, from Karen in the chat, which is, Beyond funding, what do you find are the most challenging domains for organizations? That is such a good question. Um, I think it's challenging in part because it's so specific to a different or each different organization um, and each different practice. But I might even turn it over, Tara. Do you have any response to this as someone who's kind of been working through the sustainability? I'm sorry to. Okay, if you can't come off camera, I know you have an exciting new puppy who might be demanding your attention. Yeah, yeah sorry, that's why I keep turning off my camera because I'm trying to keep my 12 week old puppy from digging. Um, <laughs> could you repeat what that question was? Absolutely. Um, so beyond funding, what do you find are the most challenging domains for organizations? Oh, um, you know, I think funding is, obviously the most challenging. Um, I think staffing, and I don't know if that falls under funding as well, sort of, um, but I feel like there's so many things that we want to do with this program that it's hard to remember like, oh, there's just me. I'm the only one. I mean, we have other staff members and stuff too, but I'm like the largest one here. Everybody want to see my puppy. <laughs> um, and so like really trying to figure out what can we do without or how do we keep the program small enough to actually have it be successful? Thank you. Helpful. Yeah, no, I think that's helpful. And, and I'll also add, I think another thing to think about is um, it related to that like sustained excitement and that sustained buy-in because everyone loves something when it's the fresh new thing that you're doing right but once it's been a couple of years uh, there can be that desire for newness right that kind of desire for a new approach so I think um, really highlighting the importance of relationships really highlighting the importance of those champions who can have gone through your program um, so thinking about ways to capture those stories and kind of build that into promotional. So the, the domains all really lean in together because I would say it's kind of that continued engagement and then that continued environmental support, which comes in part from that promotion and communication. 
Um, Ollie, is there anything you want to add? Um, nothing really. I think just the importance of those core components and that discernment process and then being able to kind of, okay, if these are our core values as an organization, what are the domains that kind of are logical partners to those core values and how do we figure out how to sustain those? I think that process can be really difficult. And um, like, as I mentioned many times, things change constantly. Um, and so it's not specifically a domain, but putting a lot of time and effort and intentionality into that, uh, that core value discernment process is I think a really helpful baseline and kind of cornerstone on which to like build out your program and think about implementation throughout the whole process. Mm -hmm. And I think to that point too, we're obviously offering kind of like a, a structured approach to this because I think folks sometimes like it's so intimidating, we want a bit of structure, but all of this is malleable, right? This is just one way to approach this, really emphasizing there is no one size fits all approach to this work in general, I think is really important. Um, but yeah, thank you for that question. Any other questions? Glad to hear the session was helpful. Not hearing any other questions. Um, I'm gonna say that we can go ahead and wrap up for this afternoon, but uh, thank you all for joining us today. Um, we will be emailing out the resources and recording from this webinar, um, as well as the tool and all the links. Thank you to my team for updating the link uh, so that it works. So we hope to see you at a future Innovation Hub Learning Community event. And a big thank you, Tara, for joining us today. Really appreciated it. Bye everyone.